Hello, welcome to Thor Talk, the show all about Marvel's resident God of Thunder. In Iron Man number 65, Thor arrives to stop a possessed Iron Man who is on a rampage. Thor says he is duty-bound to defeat him, even though Iron Man is his closest friend. The creature possessing Iron Man tries to convince Thor to stop attacking, saying they are comrades in arms. But this convinces Thor that he is an imposter. For the true Iron Man would speak of friendship, not arms. Thor clearly calls Iron Man his best friend, and thinks that Iron Man would say the same. However, flash forward a few years to Iron Man Thor number 3, where a similar situation plays out, but the two have a very different attitude towards each other. A villain named Diablo uses a potion that makes Thor and Iron Man think they betrayed each other. They clash with each other as Thor says that he knew Iron Man would turn against him one day, and Iron Man saying that Thor never trusted him. After the battle, Diablo reveals that this potion amplifies the mistrust they already have for each other. So, what happened? How did Thor and Iron Man go from best friends to this? Is it just bad writing, or the result of decades of new plot lines and developments? We'll find out as we take a look at the rise and fall of Thor and Iron Man's friendship on Thor Talk. I am Thor the Thunderer, son of Odin, prince of Asgard. Thor and Iron Man first met in Avengers number one, when they teamed up to stop Loki and decided to form the Avengers. They don't interact very much here, but this is the beginning of their relationship and is a big reason why they became friends. I showed a moment from Iron Man number 65 where Thor called Iron Man his closest friend, and this is not just a throwaway line from an older comic. The unique closeness of these two characters was highlighted multiple times in the Avengers, Iron Man, and Thor comics. The most obvious example of this can be found in Avengers number 113, where it's revealed that they know each other's secret identities. When the Vision is injured, Thor's secret identity, Dr. Donald Blake, and Tony Stark work together to heal him. When the Avengers are then under attack, Tony helps his Iron Man and then returns telling Donald Blake with a wink that he should try to find Thor in the same room where he found Iron Man. Thor realizes that Tony knew his secret identity the whole time, just as Thor secretly knew his, and he wonders who they thought they were fooling after all these years. Modern readers may think it's not a very big deal that Thor knows that Tony Stark was Iron Man, but this was actually a very closely guarded secret for nearly four decades of comics. In fact, Thor was only the second person in all of Marvel Comics to find out Iron Man's secret identity. Dr. Donald Blake as Thor was also a similarly closely guarded secret for a while. Even their fellow Avengers had no idea, as it wasn't until a decade later in Avengers number 216 that Captain America would find out their identities due to Tony's armor and Thor's hammer being destroyed by the Molecule Man. This shared secret shows just how close Thor and Iron Man are, but so does the fact that we're also always joking around with each other. Like when Thor and Iron Man both had a crush on Moondragon. Thor was the chairman of the Avengers at the time, and he put himself on Moondragon's team and Iron Man on the other team. When Iron Man protested, Thor said that Iron Man may be spending too much time with his boss, Tony Stark, since everyone knows that Tony loves the company of the ladies. And just in case readers didn't know, there's a little note at the bottom that says Thor knows Iron Man's secret identity, and he's just messing with him here. Thor then argued that the two strongest current Avengers should lead each team, which shows that Thor respects Iron Man's power. Still, even when joking around, when things get serious, they have had each other's backs. When Ultron fired an extremely deadly blast at Thor, Iron Man jumped right in front of it to protect him. When Iron Man was seemingly killed by Kang, Thor vowed to avenge his sworn friend, and went on a rampage that forced Kang to flee for his life. Also, like true friends, they're willing to stop each other when the other is about to make a bad decision. Even with some disputes ending in a fight, the two remain close friends, and their friendship would even carry on into other universes, with many saying that Ultimate Thor and Ultimate Iron Man's friendship was a highlight of the series. So clearly, Thor calling Iron Man his closest friend isn't that far-fetched. So what happened? Why did one of the Avengers' closest friendships fall apart? The most obvious reason is the events of Civil War, in which Iron Man would use Thor's DNA that he secretly collected from him and use it to create a robotic clone. 
This clone was presented as the real Thor for a bit and went haywire, killing the superhero Goliath. Thor was dead at the time, and when he returned, he was not pleased. You defiled my body, desecrated my trust, violated everything that I am. Is this how you define friendship? Is it? Is it? This created a permanent fracture in their relationship. Tony had taken a strand of Thor's hair on their first meeting, and used it to create a false Thor to fight for a cause that Thor did not want to support. Keep in mind this is all while Thor was dead. For a while, all their interactions after this were cold. They didn't fight again, but Thor refused to acknowledge Iron Man as anything other than an enemy. However, their relationship did improve. This was in part due to Tony literally getting his brain rebooted because Marvel realized they made him way too much of a villain starting with Civil War. But even after the reboot, Tony stood by what he did to Thor, saying that even though he didn't remember it, at the time he genuinely thought it was the right thing to do, since it would save the most lives. Thor finally sees the man before him as the Tony Stark he once knew, since Stark stood by what he did and did not yield. As a peace offering, Thor says that since Tony lost all of his money, he can take whatever he wants from Asgard's treasury. Tony also helped rebuild Asgard after it was destroyed, and he was instrumental in creating Asgardia. Still, despite the fact that their friendship was mended on paper, I don't think their friendship nowadays is nearly as close as it used to be. They're friends, to be sure, but best friends doesn't really seem to apply. But why is that? The problem isn't just Tony. The problem is also Captain America. In Thor number 390, Captain America reveals to Thor that Iron Man and he are in a conflict. Thor is conflicted on who is in the right, since he considers Captain America to be noble, but he is closer to Iron Man, so he suspects Captain America is at fault. Later in the issue, Captain America ends up lifting Mjolnir for the first time. This proves to Thor that he was wrong to doubt Captain America, and says that because he is worthy of Mjolnir, a sacred bond has been forged between them that stretches far into infinity. When Thor recognizes that he and Iron Man know each other's identities, he thinks that it makes sense given how long they've known each other. This is the foundation of their friendship. They are both founding Avengers, and that is something few can claim. Originally in the Big Three, Captain America was the odd man out, since he was the only one who wasn't a founding member. But after Thor number 390, it is Iron Man who is the odd man out, since he's the only one who can't lift Mjolnir. This bond is more unique and makes Thor more willing to side with Captain America. Starting with Thor number 390, Captain America slowly begins to take the best friend role from Iron Man, and he fully takes that role in Thor volume 3 number 11. Thor summons the spirit of a dead Captain America. Thor offers to avenge him and says this. The greatest honor of this ancient and tired soul has been the privilege of fighting beside you and calling you my friend. Thor then interferes with broadcast signals, which causes every news report criticizing Captain America to shut off for 60 seconds to give his friend a moment of silence, a moment of peace from the vultures. This was eight issues after Thor had his big confrontation with Iron Man, and this contrast seems to have helped Captain America cement his role of Thor's closest friend. I fully believe that Thor and Iron Man's friendship could have recovered from Tony's actions, but Captain America replaced Tony before their friendship could fully mend. Now you have things like Thor leaving Mjolnir with Captain America, and Thor naming the first human of a new Earth, Steve while Tony doesn't get anything nearly this intimate. Still, make no mistake, Thor and Iron Man are absolutely good friends. They still joke around with each other and get into the occasional prank war. They have an immense amount of respect for each other, with Thor saying that Tony is as much of a god as any immortal he has ever known. They were there since the beginning, and they will fight together until the very end. Well, that's all for this episode of Thor Talk. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Did you know that Thor and Iron Man were so close? And do you think their relationship will ever get as close again? With that being said, see you next time on Thor Talk, where... You behold in breathless wonder, the god of wonder.